Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom Cat Stitchery. I am Whitney and we are here with another Sunday Sew Along. Today is the part three and the final part of our Foz Top Sew Along. It's just Stitch Foz Top. And today we will be using the cover stitch machine and we will be doing our hems on both the, bo um, the bottom and also the um, sleeves. And I will be putting in a knit buttonhole um, on the front of the shirt also with my um, home machine, sewing machine. So showing you guys how to do that as well. I'm putting the buttons on. I hope you guys have enjoyed this sew along and as always leave any questions you have down below. If you're able to um, help or want to help support the channel, I do have a virtual tip jar. It's a coffee account. It's linked down below. All the money that I pull from there goes directly back into the channel for supplies, uh, equipment, uh, machinery, all that kind of stuff um, that helps me to make my sew alongs and tutorials. All right, guys, that's all I have. Stay tuned to the very end of this, and you can see twirls of me actually in the top once again. And uh, next week, we'll be back with a tutorial before the following week, we'll dig into the Style Arc Ziggy Jacket. Woo, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, we are now final week of the Foz. This was a quick one. <laughs> which I kind of anticipated that it would be. Move that a little bit. All right, so today we are going to, um, we're basically doing the rest of the steps now of the sew along. I'm doing this a little bit out of order because I feel like she has you do the hem, then the neckband, and then we do the sleeve hems um, last. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and do both the sleeve hems and the um, bottom hem just right now. Just freeze. Sorry if you can hear the snoring. That is Gidget. <laughs> she is... Her pillow is right kind of at my feet, and she, bless her, snores. Okay, so I've got my sleeve hems. They were pressed earlier, and they just are kind of already wanting to fold up a little bit. I do have a pin there, mostly to keep that underarm seam towards the back. And then I've got my hems here um, using my double-sided uh, fusible tape. So that's it's like glued down basically. All right. And then I'm here at my cover stitch machine. And again, I have two matching thread colors, um, in the two threads and then, uh, just gray in the looper. And this is just the same thread on a bobbin. It works just as easily. You don't have to have multiple, um, spools of thread. It's lovely. All right. I know that cover stitches can be scary. Cover stitch machines can be scary. And, um, they don't have to be because when they don't work correctly, they make the world's worst nest of thread and it is scary looking. <laughs> so <laughs> this doesn't have to be scary though. So first thing I'm going to do, I actually have this right side out because I had it on the mannequin at the end of last week. So I'm going to turn my sleeves wrong side out. Let's just do the sleeve. We'll do the sleeves first just because, just because. So I'm going to turn my sleeves wrong side out here. So the number one rule to think, to remember when you're cover stitching is that you always have to start and end on fabric. You can't just sew off of things like you do on your overlocker or serger or whatever, same machine, just different terminology depending on where you live. So um, you always have to start and end on the fabric. You will always wanna make sure that your presser foot is down, because if it is not down, um, you'll also get a big jumble, which actually happened to me on my um, original Foz that I made. <laughs> okay, so this is inside out, obviously. We have our um, hem pressed to the wrong side. Now, this can be tricky because you want to sew, you never want to sew with the wrong side up unless you want the loopy side showing, like on the right side of the fabric, which can be a look. That's actually a very popular thing to do for active wear. Um, but for this, obviously, I just want the two lines of stitching. Um, so you really have to kind of feel. And if you've pressed your seam allowances over correctly, really, once you have this under here and feeling, here, I'm going to just zoom in. Oh, look at that. Um, you can just kind of then figure out where your mark is over here on the right. I like to, I can feel my cut edge. I like to line it up just inside of the edge of my presser foot. So just find a spot that makes sense to your eye and we're just going to lower it. 
I'm going to pull this pin out because I don't want to sew over that. That was literally just to keep my um, underarm seam going the right way. All right, now I'm just going to start. Now, again, we are starting on fabric. You can go ahead and sink your needles if you want to. You don't have to, but you have to start on fabric. My presser foot is down. So now I'm just going to start sewing. And I'm just keeping that cut edge. I'm feeling where that is and making sure that it's staying kind of where I want it. Now, obviously, sleeves can be a little tricky just because it's a smaller opening. But just go slow. Okay, we're coming back around here. I've, where's my snips? So what I want to do before I connect my line of stitching is I want to trim those threads as close as I can get it and also my back one. Okay? So we want to trim those off from where we started. All right, now we're going to keep sewing. And you should have two, it's hard, to, we're not at a good angle, but there should be two notches on your presser foot here that line up with the needles. So that's what you want to line up this previous two lines of stitching with, okay? So that you are making sure you're sewing right on top of them or as close as possible. And just do that for about an inch or so. Then you want to make sure that your presser or that your needles are in the utmost um, position. We're going to raise the presser foot, okay? Your cover stitch machine should come with some hooked tweezers like this. If not, you can buy them at a sewing store. We are going to put these under here, and I'm going to hook those two threads. Make sure your presser foot's up, otherwise this won't work. You have to release those tensions. And I'm going to pull the thread towards me, okay? Now I'm just going to cut off the end, okay? I just cut off the end of all of those threads. Now, I'm going to pull the work back like so. And the only place you should be connected is at your, I'm going out of focus, is at your looper thread. So I'm going to cut that to the same length as my top threads. Now, everything should be pulled to the back. Okay? So now, I'm just going to tie these off. And I just do like a few, I mean, I just tie them like you would any knot. Three times is usually good. And then trim it close. And that is how you get. So here you can see where I've overlapped it a little bit. And there on the front, because we lined it up with those notches on the presser foot, everything you know, and when you're feeling that raw edge, I mean, it should all, you know, just basically tuck in nicely. Um, I mean, if you got way off and you want to trim some of that excess, you can. Just be careful that you're not cutting a hole in the fabric on the other side. Again, ask me how I know. So that is how we do one that is in the round, such as the sleeve. Obviously, you're going to want to go and do this on the other sleeve. But now we're going to do the hem, which on this particular garment goes from one end to the other because... Um, Oops, wrong way. Because, you know, this isn't a t-shirt. You know, it doesn't, the hem, the bottom hem is not in a circle. It's a line. So now, keeping in mind the rule that you have to start and end on fabric. Now, remember, this, you do have a seam allowance that you're going to be using here because your band is going to get attached to this. So start right at the edge but just, you can come in just a little bit. I'm actually going to sink my needles this time. Lower that presser foot. Okay, so now again, I'm keeping my finger on that um, cut edge just to make sure that it is behaving itself. And you're just sewing like you would normally. This is where this table comes in so handy um, for, you know, pieces like this. It just helps um, you not get all of the weight of the garment, like, pulling on the machine. Okay. 
Okay, now when I come to the end here, I don't want to sew off, but I want to get close. I want to get within that seam allowance. If you want to do the hand crank, it works here, just like it does anywhere else. One more. Okay, utmost position. I'm going to raise that. Pull those out. Cut it. Now, with the hem of this top, we don't need to tie anything off because we will be, um, pull that off, cut my looper thread. Um, because we're going to be sewing the band, the neck band on, and that's going to get caught up in that. So um, it's going to, you know, finish off that edge so that it doesn't come undone. So we don't need to tie anything off there. Although you can just go ahead and, and tie that off the same way. In fact, we'll just go ahead and do that. So in case you don't have any cross sewing, I'll show you how to do this. If this were like finishing it off for good for you, you would tie this end off just like you did your sleeve one. But on the other side, you gotta pull stuff to the back and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, look how nice that is. Just everything nice and nicely done. Okay, so on this side, we just have the looper thread that's on the back and the other two are on the front. This is very easy and it might be kind of hard to see, but you can see if you're looking carefully that there is the little loop there for that thread. I'm just going to pull that through and then on the other side, pull that piece through. So now you've pulled those through to the back and then you could tie it off the same way as the other end. So it can be easy to just to get like um, caught up in the fact that it looks, you know, it goes back and forth and that's a confusing looking pattern, but really it's a machine. It does things systematically. So you just take a minute to look at how it makes that stitch. It makes it a lot less scary. Okay, now we are going to make our neck band. So we're going to set this aside and I'll meet you back at the serger to do our neck band. Okay, so now um, we've got our cardigan, the body of it, off to the side. Now we're going to be sewing. We should have our two neckband pieces here. And we are going to be sewing right sides together um, the top, which is going to be the center back. So these, this is the area that is, in fact, not interfaced. We're just going to match those short ends together. So there's our long interfaced pieces. Here's the top here. Again, three eighths of an inch. So we are gonna come over here, line that up with my the bed of my machine. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Trim those threads. I have a trash can right underneath my table that I take my scraps. I know you can buy little baskets and stuff that go like off the edge of the table that you can dump things into, but I don't have one. <laughs> okay, before we go and press this though, we are going to finish off the bottoms of both sides of our neck band, okay? So what we're gonna do is you should have a um, notch here at the bottom. We are gonna fold, which is basically just the center. We're gonna fold, um, these lengthwise right sides together and you can use a sewing machine or a serger. We're doing everything with serger and cover stitch today. So just gonna do that and I'm gonna serge that together. Okay, now on this one, I'm gonna clip somewhat close to the cut edge here, but on this folded edge, you can tie that off if you want. I just have never found it necessary, but I do leave a sizable tail um, in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn this right side out. We're gonna do this, do the same thing to the other side of your neck band. We're gonna turn it right side out. So go to this um, ironing board 
and press the entire neck band and you can match your notches so when you get to the part where there's notches you know just match those but press the entire neck band finish off the other end like this and press it wrong sides together all the way around and I will meet you right back here okay so my entire neck band has been pressed we finished off our ends it's all been pressed wrong sides together now we are going to pin this to the front of our top slash cardigan slash whatever you want to call it <laughs> so I am just going to um, <clears throat> excuse me pin and we want the uh, finished edge here to match up with the bottom of our top just like so and I am gonna put pins in here and then you should have adequate notches So there's a notch right up here at the top that should match up with the notch that is right below or yeah, right below where the top of your interfacing is. So everything from this notch to the bottom is interfaced. And there's just like a little bit of interfacing that goes above that notch. Then you come up on a double notch right here. Oh, that's my computer saying that that's finished and we're going to match that notch because when you get to the back of the neck here you are going to stretch the neck band um, so you can see there's a little bit there but you are going to stretch the neck band to fit so that second notch <clears throat> is the shoulder seam and then the seam in the neck band is center back seam I always mark when I cut things on the fold um, so you see that there's going to be some pull. We're going to have to stretch that neck band just a little bit to fit, which will make it fit nice and snugly against the neck. And then we'll do the same notches down the other side. I just really enjoy a pattern that's got lots of reference notches. I just think, I mean, I personally can almost go... Um, instruction free if I've got good notches which is why I do find um, style maker for instance or not style maker style arc for instance has very minimal um, instructions but their notches are spot on so okay all right I also want to know the hem of this pattern is three quarters of an inch and I did one inch because that's what my tape was so I'm gonna have a quarter of an inch that I'm gonna of length that the neck band is gonna be a little bit longer um, that should all come out in the wash don't worry about that it's a minimal amount and everything should be fine okay <laughs> what I'm gonna do next is so with the body of the um, or surge with the body of the uh, top against the feed dogs and the neck band up and I'm just gonna get that wedged underneath my blade it all comes down to how this starts on whether or not you get things going through smoothly or not sometimes it wants to catch because there's a lot of bulk right there so I'm just gonna go slow and kind of work that through yes and once that end is in once it's gone through, you're good to go. It's really just the start. It's not as bad on the other end. Okay. So I'm just surging away here. Matching up my raw edges. You won't be stretching anything right through here because this is the interfaced area. The other reason I want the neck band up because this is the interfaced area. Okay, we're coming up on, there's kind of a curve here. And then once we are past this area, our neck band is stretchy. And you'll notice that you'll have to start stretching it a little bit to fit. Okay. 
watch those pins. We do want our notches to, I mean, they are helpful for keeping our notches together, but watch those pins. And we want to make sure that our seam allowances are going towards the back. So that side is easy because it, the feed dogs pushed it the correct way. There's going to be some bulk here, so just go slow. And then when I get to this shoulder seam, I just want to make sure that it is going the correct way. coming to the interfaced part. All right, so now So when I was mentioning earlier, sometimes fabric can get kind of folded up under here and it's real easy to get it because it's a wide presser foot to get that caught under there. And that's when you come into having issues with um, like this piece getting caught up and then you accidentally, it gets caught under the blade and then you have cut a hole in things. Just be aware of that. All right. Okay, so this time we want a nice long tail. that away because what I'm gonna do is find the tail <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I use a darning needle or a tapestry needle that has a kind of a duller tip but a real big eye and um, first I'm just gonna knot this okay but when I'm pulling my knot tight stick your needle in that hole because that's what your knot will tie up against. I can't remember where I learned this trick, but it's a wonderful one. So then that knot, you don't get like the knot like way up here when you want it to be down here. I know we've all had that happen. All right, so now I'm just gonna thread this needle with the rest of the tail. Oops. And then I'm just gonna feed the tail back through. So it's been knotted, but I'm gonna feed it back through, I don't know, an inch and a half or so. And pull that back up. Kind of snug it up a little bit. And then trim off my tail. Because that is just the end of that. And it's gonna be like so. Now we are going back to the cover stitch and we are going to cover stitch um, all the way around there. Or you could also, if you wanted to, and actually I may do this on this one, um, just because I think it's a little bit cleaner. You could just do it on a sewing machine and just top stitch, well I'll do the cover stitch to show you guys. Um, you could just do a single stitch because this doesn't need to stretch and just sew your uh, seam allowance to the body but just top stitch, I don't know, like a 16th, eighth of a way from that seam all the way around. And that's going to keep that tucked nicely um, where it's supposed to all the way around. But this doesn't need to stretch. So it you can just do a regular stretch stitch on your sewing machine as well. But I will do it on the um, cover stitch so you can see. Because I'll have to start and stop um, again like I did on the hem. And you can see that we've caught that into that seam. So that should be nice and secure. Um, so now I just need to tie off the other end. I'll do that in a second. Um, but yeah, everything's all caught up and it's nice and secure um, there inside that seam. Okay, so I'm just going to finish off this seam the same way and I'll meet you at the cover stitch. We're almost done. We just need to do buttonholes after this, after we cover stitch this. All right, let's cover stitch this neckband down. 
Oops, I'm all caught up here. All right, let's just... So remember, the most important rules of cover stitch are that... You can go press this if you want. I always press it afterwards, but we just want that seam allowance to go towards the body. But the rule is that you want to start and stop on fabric. So I'm just deciding where I want that. And you can bury your needles. Lower the presser foot. That's where I made a big mess with my last pause. All right, now we've got a lot of bulk down here because we've tucked threads back in and that kind of thing. So just remember, it's just like sewing with the sewing machine. If you need to kind of grab onto those tails to kind of help it a little bit, that's fine. So I'm just going to, all right, and then once we're past that, okay, now as I'm going, I am lining up this seam line just to the right about, I don't know, an eighth, sixteenth, probably sixteenth of an inch to the right of this um, needle mark. Keep that as straight as possible. And I'm also, as I'm going around, kind of pulling, not pulling the seam apart, but just making sure everything is lying correctly and just kind of, yeah, I guess kind of pulling that fabric. Pulling, keeping it taut. It's coming out beautifully. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Now you want to make sure that no, because the cardigan, I mean, it's just a little more unwieldy than like a t-shirt just because it's open. Um, but just make sure, you know, if a piece of it is getting caught on something, sometimes that can pull the fabric where you don't want it to pull and then you get wavy cover stitching. So just make sure that everything is kind of freely moving at the machine's pace. like get any pinches in there sorry that keeps going out of focus I keep I do find once you hit the interfaced area it gets <laughs> a lot easier All right, again, the rule, you want to start and end on fabric. Seriously, if you keep that in mind, so many of the issues are resolved. One more. Oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> so we want to do, you know, use the hand crank if you need to. Up position. I'm going to raise the presser foot. Pull my threads out. Just cut the ends here because they're looped. Now we're going to pull the work back. Cut that looper. So then on this end, it's very easy. We're just going to tie it off. On the other end, so we have this nice top stitch down. Looks lovely. On this end, though, we're going to have to pull it to the back. So I want to find my looper thread, which is right there. 
and I just use my little tweezers here. And there's one, and then the other one will be on the side. I can see it. And pull that through. So there we go. Everything is pulled, oops, sorry, in frame. Everything's pulled to the back. And then we're just going to tie it off. The same way we did the other one. I like to go three times. So it's one, here's two, and three. Trim our tails, and there we go. Sorry, that's the thread from the machine. So there we have it. That looked lovely. All right, now we're going to do our buttonholes. Um, I am, I've shown you guys so many times how I do my buttonholes. Um, also go and hit this with really nicely with an iron, but we're going to put, mark our buttonholes. Now if you want, you can also use the, um, uh, the piece for the neckband. It will show you where you can put the uh, recommended spot for the buttonholes. Just remember to line it up, you know, three eighths of an inch um, from the bottom because, you know, of the, um, seam allowance that we took at the bottom of the neckband. But, um, or you can put it on, mark where you want the top one in, use a simplex, which is what I usually do. It's just kind of up to you. But go and mark your six buttonholes. Um, I'm using, I think I'm using three-eighths of an inch buttons, but uh, I think it recommends either half inch, maybe three-eighths, uh, somewhere around there. But um, mark your six buttonholes, and I will meet you back at my home sewing machine so that we can do some uh, knit buttonholes and get all these buttons put on. Okay, I'm at my sewing machine, my home sewing machine. There's a big glare from the overhead lights and I really apologize, I'm trying to make it better. All right, so we're gonna use a stretch stitch. So I go over here to my buttonhole stitches and um, basically a stretch stitch, it's using buttonhole, I guess, not stretch stitch, is this is a stretch buttonhole and it does, as you can see, zigzag. I mean. It does a zigzag stitch. That's how it makes a woven buttonhole. But it gives it a bit more stretch so that when you are putting the button through, it, it has more give. So it's not as dense of a line of stitching for each side of the buttonhole. And then it tacks it off at the top and bottom. Okay? So that is what I've chosen. And that's kind of what it looks like. Sorry, that's going in and out of focus for you. There we go. So now... <clears throat> back over here. I have um, my same thread that I was using in the cover stitch machine. I've moved it over here now. I've got a stretch needle on my machine. This is my buttonhole foot. I've put the button that I'm using, the size in there, and that gauges um, the size. I don't, all machines are different. I actually don't really like the buttonholes on this machine, and at some point I would like to trade this machine in and get just a little mechanical machine that I can travel with if need be, but also um, it does better buttonholes. <laughs> All right, so just gonna put that on there. Sorry, lower my buttonhole lever. And then I have marked again on my right side when worn of the button placket. And I mark the bottom of my buttonholes because that's kind of where I'm starting, which this makes it a little difficult. Um, and I want to line this up. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to mark that down to my line. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to line that up. And then I just hit the gas. It's just... These are small buttonholes because these buttons aren't very big. Let me cut this and I'll show it to you. Hold on. Cut my threads. A little bit of a thread nest there. Always start at the bottom of your garment too when you're figuring out buttonholes because inevitably your first buttonhole you'll mess it up and it'll be like right at the top, the most noticeable. There's some excess little thread hanger honors here. All right, so there is my stretch buttonhole. 
Um, so now I'm going to finish doing all, obviously the rest of these. And then I like to put a line of um, fray check in, in the side my buttonhole both on the front and on the back. And then I cut mine op open using a buttonhole chisel. I've shown you guys how I do that a million times. So um, I'm going to do that and then to mark my buttons what I do is I put my top together, wrong sides together, so this is not how it's worn, but wrong sides together, match it up, and then I stick a pin right through the middle of that buttonhole and mark where it comes out on the other side, which, which should be right in the middle of this band too, and that's how I mark my buttons. So yeah, go ahead, finish your buttonholes, cut them open, and then mark your buttons, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I've got my buttonholes all cut open, all six of them, and I've got my little buttons here. Now, um, now I'm going to sew the buttons on. I've also gone and marked where my buttons with a friction pen, friction pen, so that goes away with heat. Um, but obviously, the button will be covering that up as well. So. Let's talk about buttons. So my machine does buttonholes. It's basically just a zigzag stitch. It goes back and forth zigzag and drops the feed dogs so that it's in place. Um, these, I'm using a two hole button. So I will just be doing a buttonhole stitch twice. Um, if it were a four hole button, I would do it once one way and once the other way. And I find that that is plenty secure, but um, I'm just gonna be doing it twice. So I have a stitch on my machine where the buttonholes are for the, button sewing and I it just basically drops the feed dogs and does a zigzag back and forth so start here at the bottom um what else was I going to say about that <laughs> um oh thread color now I'm going to be using the same thread color that I used for the rest of the garment just because there's a little bit this is kind of a mother of pearl iridescent looking button and I want it to kind of pick up on that but if I were putting, let's say, like a brown coconut button or something on there, I would use brown thread to match the button. So just, you know, it can be a design choice. You could use something bright and contrasting if you wanted to. You can use something that matches the button, something that matches the garment. It's up to you. But just, you know, keep that in mind that you do have design choices when it comes to your buttons. So I'm just going to, oh, I got to put the foot on, don't I? That really helps. <laughs> <clears throat> really helps to have a foot on your machine. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to set this on top of that spot. And I'm going to use my hand wheel to anchor that. And then lower the presser foot. And then I like to do this by hand because see that's too big. So I can adjust well there we go so that I'm not hitting the button with the needle and now we'll do one and then two and there you have it and then we can clip our threads and it does a locking stitch for you it's a really a great way to sew on buttons <laughs> so there you have it there's my button so i'm just going to do the rest of the five the other five um for all six and i'll meet you back at the mannequin okay there she is in all of her glory i am really loving these buttons that i chose they're just so pretty and pearlized i was going to do um pearl snaps because i did snaps on my other one and then couldn't find any that I liked, so um, she's sticking on Lena here. But uh, yes, very pleased. So there you have it. That is the Foz Top by Itch to Stitch, all done on my cover stitch. Well, pretty much my cover stitch and serger, with the exception of the buttonholes, which obviously I had to have a regular machine to do the buttonholes. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, and I will show you the finished garment on my body if you missed it in week one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next week for a tutorial before we um, then dig into the Style Arc Ziggy Jacket. It's going to be a big one. Okay, bye. Yeah.